three quarters years old, and Mary Herbeck invited me to have an exhibition here in the gallery. And so I remember Mary very well. Um, and so uh, that's how I first came to the Hannon House, was through Mary, and that was uh, kind of after the closing of the Zeitgeist Gallery on Michigan Avenue. Everybody seemed to come over here. Jim is here, and, you know, Vito's been here, and everybody's just uh, kind of made this uh, um, an extension of what I had come to um, know <clears throat> through the Michigan Gallery and the Zeitgeist Gallery. So, um, I, I uh, worked with Pam and uh, Rachel on getting the, uh, the sculpture started here. Um, and I, ta I taught a class for the first time in about 30, 40 years. I, I taught a class. And, and I'm not like really teaching people. I like to mentor people, but not really instruct people, so that was kind of uh, exciting for me to work with all of the ladies here at the uh, Hannon House. Um, and so we, uh, Pam brought this idea of putting the sculpture up in front to my attention, and I thought about it. And, you know, we worked on it. Um, and I thought it was a great location, right in the heart of the cultural center. You know, uh, we got MoCat and the artist market and the art museum and uh, the Del Pryor Gallery and all these places that I'm kind of been used to things to um, and been acquainted with over the years. Um, so. I have had a little bit of history with bronze casting, but this piece that was the first large-scale bronze uh, casting that I worked on. And um, so it was kind of a challenge for me to, to try to do this. But I had a vision, and the, um, the class helped me to realize the, the kind of design for the piece. And, after the class was over, I started to make the, the sculpture out of plaster, and then the plaster became molds that got cast into wax, and the wax got cast <laughs> into bronze, and the bronze got welded together, and, and so that's how we arrived at the piece that's out front today. Um, so I, the other thing was that I, that we were talking about is there's so many gardens today in Detroit and I've been living in Detroit for 40 years and 40 years ago I don't remember all these gardens all over town and today it's fantastic how many gardens there are in Detroit so I mean you can't call Detroit Garden City because that name's over <laughs> <laughs> so, but it just seems like that we should have And so I thought it was really nice to focus on the theme of the, the garden. And so during the class, I, it was my idea like, to come up with the idea of what the garden meant, you know, and what, how gardens grow is by the sun. And so I came up with this name, the sunbeam sculpture. And, um, so I, I thought, you know, I would interpret that and, you know, in the back of my mind, how am I going to do that, you know. And I played around with the, the arrangement and the design of the piece and um, usually the sun is up in the sky. Well, the, the sun, I kind of turned it, it looked like an urn. It, it kind of came out looking like an urn and not glowing beams coming out of the sun, but like an urn, but it's really not an urn, it's just supported, so it, it came out looking like an urn. And one of the contributors, Dennis Naraki, he can't be here tonight, but Dennis said, 
well, it looks so mysterious, you know, and I thought, well, that's perfect because, you know, the sun is kind of a mystery. So the energy of the sun is this urn shape, and it's rather than up in the sky, it's setting. It's the setting sun. Um, but that's just the way it turned out. So, um, you know, <clears throat> the other thing is this, uh, this is a nice home for the, for the artwork that it'll commemorate not only the, the ladies here that, that I taught the class with, but the, we all have some identity with the Hannon Foundation and the sculpture up front. And um, so it'll be here for quite a while. Bronze lasts forever, you know, the we don't. <laughs> so that's all I got ahead I, that I've got to say and thank you all for coming.